Hi everyone, Debbie with Bug Juice here. Just wanted to do a quick video showing some new people with Cameos how to organize your files in your library and when you download files from various SVG sites, how to um, import them into your library. I've already download, downloaded for, um, for sake of time from Miss Kate's Cuttables. I went ahead and got the freebie file and I download mine to my desktop. You have to just find where you download your files and you'll have the zip file right here. I've unzipped it and now I've got this folder. So it's got all my files here in it. Now I'm going to open up my Silhouette software. And as you can see, um, I have quite a few folders here in my library. Now. I'm going to just show you a couple examples of how I organize my files. Everybody will want to probably do their own thing with it. I understand that. But at least this might help you to um, figure out how you want to do yours. I make separate folders for every um, SVG company I buy from, like My Scrap Chick. Um, I've got Cutting Cafe. I've got Lori Whitlock, Scrap and Bug Design. And what I also do if I'm if I'm buying a lot of them and they're pretty big files like with SVG cuts right here, this is a good example. You can click, double click my SVG cuts. You can see I have another subfolder under that with the kit name. I like to organize mine in kits. And how you create the folders within there is the same way I'm going to show you how to create your main folder. Uh, you would just go up to file this file folder here to create a new one and as long as you're clicked on like SVG if I've already created this SVG cut folder you would just click this and it would bring down another one underneath it that you could rename to whatever the new kit was you were getting. But I'm going to just show you if you were just from the start doing this. So we're going to create a new folder for Miss Kate's Cuttables because I do not have that. So you want to make sure you're clicked on my library because if you were clicked on any of these other things then your new folder is going to be like a subfolder within that folder. So click on my library, go up to the file folder icon, click it, and as you can see, it's highlighted down here and it says Untitled Folder. I'm going to call that Miss Kate's Cuttables. Hit Enter. It's going to alphabetize it. So it's going to be up here in the M's, of course. And so now it's selected. You would want to click your Open icon. I know mine's on my desktop. If yours was in your document somewhere, you would just locate where your folder is. I've got this cute mushroom folder right here so I'm going to open that. Now you could do one at a time if that makes you feel more comfortable but I like to do um, a selection of all so I just drag over it and select all of them and I just drag it into my folder and drop it. So I'm going to click cancel so you can see that. Now another way I do it, um, th this way I just showed you is not the way I always do it, but it's whatever feels more comfortable to you. If I was doing it my way, um, I would just move this over a little bit so that I can see my desktop file. I'm going to open that and I'm going to move it over here so I can show you what I'm doing. I'd select all these again and I would just drag it over here in this white space and drop. It's the simplest way to me, but like I said, I wanted to show you both ways you could do it because there's no right or wrong. It just depends on what you're, what you're more comfortable with. And again, if I wanted to create more folders within Miss Kate's Cuttables, if I started purchasing a lot of them, I would probably start categorizing by the name of my files. Um, it's not necessary, and especially if you're not going to have a lot of uh, big kits or anything, you, you wouldn't have to do that. But I like to keep everything together, so when I'm wanting to cut, cut this camp s'more, 
maybe I don't want to cut the whole thing and I don't want to have to dig through all the files. I know I want to cut this s'more box. I can just click the s'more box. What I like about this too is I've brought in my JPEG of this, what this looks like. I like to keep those within the files too whenever they're available. And I like this because it shows all of your cuts within the screen, which I love because when I have my SVGs in my doc in my documents saved with sure cuts a lot, I had to um, open them to see what they were. I didn't get a view of what they were, so I'm really loving this library because I don't use Make the Cut because I'm on a Mac, and I know. I think my uh, friend Ruthie uses Make the Cut, and she said she can view all of hers through Make the Cut. But um, again, with shortcuts, a lot of people, you could not view it. You had to open it all up uh, to see what it was, and I did not like that. So I really like the Silhouette Designer Edition library functions, and so far I'm loving the program. And without using making the cut I don't know what I'm missing I guess so <laughs> I'm happy with the the designer edition software so um, I hope this helps you if you have any questions just drop me an email and I'll try to go over anything that you have a question about and I'll do a another video showing you how to trace these and make um, cut lines for these because obviously these are SVG files and you know Silhouette software does not cut them without you showing it where the um, cut or creating the cut lines. If you get files from various other um, SVG companies, some of them have uh, GSD files, SVG files, they have make the cut files. If you do have a GSD file, you can click that and, and it will have the cut lines already for you. So Silhouette recognizes the cut lines on that file format. Thank you for watching.